Howdy folks, this is just a quick demonstration using the brushes that I was talking to you about before. We're going to just show you on this bit of paper the different mark makings that these different bristles do. Some of this might seem very obvious, but uh, there are subtle differences. Now I started off before talking about different bristles. These are both similar, they're flats. They're pretty much bright flats, meaning short bristle brushes. But this is the synthetic texture, right? It's, you can see how floppy that is. I'm just going to chuck this into a bit of stiff straight out of the tube paint. Now this is acrylic paint, so it has a little bit of flexibility. And I'll just show you what this does. You see how that dries out pretty quickly. It drops the paint in a hurry. These really, even if I push at it, see, I'm putting lots of pressure on that and it's not really covering. That's why these need a little bit of moisture. So I'll just add a little bit of water to it, mush that in, get it into the brush, and then you'll see the difference. It will be a lighter, whoops, no, it's not doing it for me. Just hold that thought, I'll be right back. Here we go. That's more what these will do. And you can see that's quite a thin mix. There's a lot of bit of water in there, but that's beautiful for doing glazes. And you imagine that glazing both with oils and with acrylics, you can do lovely graded areas, um, beautiful gradations. I'll just pop that there. And we're going to do the same thing with this. This is a stiff bristled hogs bristle brush. Pretty rough one, it's not the greatest brush in the world, but what it's good for is it remains separate. So you can actually use it a little bit like it was a fan brush. If you put pressure on it and push it backwards and forwards and crisscross like you would if it was oils, you'll get a little bit of coverage. We've done the flats, we're gonna do some rounds now. This, as I explained before, I gave it a squish and I explained it wasn't such the greatest round brush I've ever had. It's a bit obvious, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but round brushes are great because you can twist and turn, unlike a flat brush, which slides and chisels. You can get zigzags and might be, it does help to put paint on the brush though, if you want to do that properly. So we just, so you can do that, which you can't do with a round brush. Why is that? Because it's just the chisel, chisel shape. It, stops and starts zigzags and does like that. I love zigzags. I'll show you some of my paintings one day. They do come in a great deal of shapes and sizes. These super fine ones, this is an expensive brush. This and that are probably roughly the same price, believe it or not, because this is a Kolinsky sable. I use these for doing super detailed work. I can show you some examples of that one day too, if you're very good. You can do beautiful intricate little curly Q things. I often tell students, I say, what brush should I use? Well, a brush basically is an extension of your body. And if whatever you're painting, you've got a kind of, there's no right or wrong brush necessarily. There's no rule books about what suits you or what doesn't. If you feel comfortable using a particular type of brush and you're having to wash it and reuse it on a painting, God's telling you, go buy another one. With these, Small attack, put some pressure on it, and then suddenly you've got leaf shapes happening. If you're doing leaves, pick up a brush that looks like a leaf. I've never seen a leaf look like that. Could be a baby cactus. I really don't know. Oh, filberts. Love filberts. Again, this is a, that's a Taclon, brand new Taclon. It has to be fairly wet stuff, wet mix. And again, bigger, rounder shapes. Really useful. That could be a daisy. Could be a daisy. Yeah, it could be a daisy. And they have the advantage of being flat. You can also use them just like you would to block in an, an area broadly. Or if you're trying to get in a, uh, a narrow area, they can do that for you as well. And of course, like the round brush, they have that same little pointy end to it because that's the shape they are. These are also filberts. They're flat, but they have a round end. Great for sticky, thick, viscous paint. Great for pushing around as well because they're resilient. They can get into tight corners or they can be used at the same time, tight corner, then broaden out. You can get in quite small and then you can just use it really broadly. It's say you were doing the corner, a nook or a cranny. That's a bit wet, bit dry mix there. 
But anyway, gives you an idea of what you can do with a filbert. The next one on our list, liner brushes or what they used to call, they used to use for pinstriping. Please don't ask me to pinstripe. That is such an amazing pinstriping and lettering. Sign writing is an incredible skill. Now with a skinny little brush like this, you have to have a reasonable degree of liquid, liquidity, but it has to be able to cover. It basically can do a similar thing that we were doing there, except that it will last for a much longer, I did a bit of thick thin there, mainly this is fairly thirsty paper that I'm painting on and it just robbed me. What happens with acrylics and what happens with oils, slightly different. These you can use with enamels as well, but you've got to have the mix right. I tell my students it has to you mix your paint up, and this can be oils as well. I said it's got to be the right mix, a little bit like fan brushes, which we'll get to. It has to be thin enough to flow easily and leave the paintbrush, but it also has to cover. It has to be a bit, has to be a bit runny, but Beautiful brushes once you get the hang of them, they're lots of fun. I managed to get a little bit of thick thin there because I put uneven pressure on it. You might see from there that I actually often have my little pinky extended. This is, this is a little side thing, it's about technique. But I often have my, if I'm doing delicate work, I have my fingernail there so that I can actually hold the same consistent distance between the tip of the brush and... Um, that way I can't, if I do that, you get thick and thin. Now we get to the fun stuff. These are deer's hoofs. And basically they're just a flat brush, but you can make a really nice, clearly defined angle. If you just do them flat, you've got to twist your, to make an absolutely square shape, you have to bring your wrist forward so it behaves like, one of these, which do, does it naturally. Again, it's one of those specialist brushes I personally don't need to use very much, but they're useful for getting into nooks and crannies again. You can get a nice, tight little V-shaped mark if you needed them. It has its decorative purposes, but a lot of these specialist brushes really that's all they are, they're specialist brushes. You can usually do everything with the first three that I showed you. This was the fan brush that I thought was probably isn't going to do very good. Yeah, see how that's got an uneven, it's not really fanning for us very much. This is an El Cheapo version of the same thing, but it's done with synthetics, which seem to stay open. The trick to using this kind of brush is don't put too much paint in them. Load it up and then take the excess off. And that's what a fan brush can do. Uh, it's the phone again. It's the phone again. <laughs> when you acquire these special effects brushes, they're there to play with and work out how they suit you. They do things that other brushes can't do, just like a lovely old brush will do things that a new brush can't. But you can do little cross hatches and you can do, great for patterning, and if that's what you want to be doing. I remember looking at some of um, Van Gogh's pen drawings and he didn't even use a pen, he used to grab a reed and split it up and he used to do these wonderful wavy line things. So that's the kind of thing that a fan brush can do. You can use them for doing like little just dabbing. They make really interesting textures as well. Just because they've got long, long legs doesn't mean to say they have to run a mile. You can just use them as a texturing device. Oh, the dagger. No biggie here. It's just, it's obvious. It's a little bit like the deer's hoof. It, will, it can get into really sharp slices and then just by manipulating it you can get different kinds of patterns that maybe a flat brush couldn't do. They're just a nice brush. If you want to do gerberas, you can do gerberas. That's almost a gerber, isn't it? I don't know what that looks like, but sure. It's a fish. <laughs> Again, you can see, depending on the shape of the brush, you create the shapes you want. This is a bristle brush. It'll do the same thing. The, the, 
bristle brushes are more fun in that you can sort of you can use them as a as more they've got a little bit of resistance they've got a bit of grab so you can make interesting texture surfaces now that behaves a whole lot differently to this that's a bit too woozy for that sort of thing it just wants to blob as it dries out you still get really nice interesting effects that's because it's a bristle brush all right i think that's about all i can say about these particular brushes i'm going to put these in that water straight away as you must do just to protect them make sure that they're covered and then they're good they can sit there for a little extra time i was saying before there's no such thing as a bad brush an old brush has a, can do things that these can't i'm going to in the next the next clip i'm going to show you how these are made and like 25 years of constant use and then also what they can do now and a lot of these i use doing um, textures like this that's gouache over acrylic. And with those brushes that have that short little stubby things, you, these paintings were done with white as an underpainting and then staining with another brush over the top. So you can get this really fine stipple textures with those short bristle brushes. And under here, all that, all those lights were done with one of those funny little brushes. Here's one where I haven't overglazed. This is just nice loose and you can just use it with a bristle brush. Now it's very true that because of the texture of the canvas, I'm able to use that as well. But basically to get these soft, almost photographic light falling on a subject, you need those short bristle brushes because a big wobbly brush ain't gonna cut it. I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit of that. I'll also show you how you can use those short bristled worn out brushes to do another technique with oils. We're back. I hope that was fun for you. Thank you for watching. Look forward to seeing you again real soon. Bye.